Well, Ruth, uh, Ruth Diolch yn Fawr, uh, am y Gyflwyniad Môr a Geredig. Na, gyfeillion mae'n frant iawn i fod nôl am yn Llandudno unwaith eto. Mae'n cyfle i gwrdd gyda ffrindiau hen a newydd. Conference, it's a genuine pleasure to be back here in Llandudno once again, a time to catch up with old friends uh, and new. But as you've heard uh, several times already from the platform here uh, this morning, a time to remember as well an old friend of the Labour family, uh, Paul Flynn, who isn't with us today. And as you've heard from others, anyone who knocked doors in the recent Newport West by-election will have heard so many people speak with such great affection and warmth about what Paul meant to them, what he did for Newport, and what he has done for our party. That willingness to stand against the tide, to challenge orthodoxy wherever it might be found. That was the 40-year contribution that Paul made to Labour. How could it have been otherwise? for a Welsh-speaking product of an immigrant Irish family who rejoined the front bench of the Labour Party as an octogenarian and proceeded to run rings around his government opponents, we know how proud he would have been on Thursday of last week to see someone with his values take up the mantle as the new Member of Parliament for Newport West. Just like Paul, Ruth is someone shaped by her community and through the public services that she has provided over many years. I know and you know that she will make a truly outstanding Welsh Labour MP. Well done, Ruth. Well done to all those who worked so hard in that fantastic campaign. Da iawn i ti, Ruth, a diolch i bob un a weithiodd mor galed yn yr ymdrech wych honno. Now, uh, conference, uh, Newport West was not, of course, the only contest we've had recently. Since we last met in this hall, we've had our own leadership election in the Welsh Labour Party. I hope you'll agree with me that it was a contest conducted in the best traditions of our party and of our movement. Up and down the length and breadth of Wales, Elynid, Vaughan and I travelled by the end, quietly chanting one another's stump speeches. <laughs> Everywhere, meeting fantastic members of our party with their enormous commitment to what this movement means in their communities. I was immensely grateful for the spirit in which that contest was conducted. Elynid and Vaughan ran superb campaigns that reflected their own authentic labour values and those of their supporters. I want to thank them both, and I want to thank them particularly for agreeing to be pivotal members of our new government. <laughs> Conference, uh, we meet on the threshold of celebrations to mark the 20th anniversary of devolution here in Wales. I am now the fourth person to hold the office of First Minister. The very first leader of the Assembly in Wales, Alan Michael, is in the hall today. In fact, it's about this time of year in April that many years ago in the 1980s, uh, Alan and I would have sat down together to begin to plan a series of projects and activities for a group of young people that we would work with in the west of Cardiff during each summer period. Now, for those who were not there, it can be difficult to describe that most dismal of decades. The deliberate stoking of unemployment, the relentless cuts in public services, the assault on trades unions and labour local authorities, and the targeting of young people in particular, not worth 50 pence an hour, as one of Thatcher's ministers sneeringly proclaimed at the time. In the teeth of one of the most reactionary UK governments in history, we set out to create at least a chink of hope 
in those long summer months for those young people denied a sense of their own future by the harsh economic realities of that time. And when I became leader of our party and first minister, I said that I wanted Labour in Wales to be a beacon of hope in a darkening world. And I said that because again in 2019, our young people face challenges which remind me of those of the 1980s. The impact of a decade of deliberate Tory austerity, the sharply unequal society created by it, life under a Tory government that wants to turn its back on the world and deny young opportunities to young people offered to those that came before them. Perhaps nobody understood that better than our second First Minister, my great friend and mentor, Rodri Morgan. For the 10 years when he was First Minister, I had the great privilege of working alongside him in that formative period in the history of devolution. Not a single day goes by when I don't draw on the lessons that he taught me. The lessons I learned from him and his remarkable ability to combine genuine and authentic popular appeal with genuine and authentic political principle. The ability to translate that combination into practical action which reaches deep into people's lives and reaches deepest into those who need our help the most. A focus on the small things, a pithai bachan, the bread and butter things, that have demonstrated in an entirely and intensely practical way that the concerns of working families in Wales are our concerns. Something built on by successive Welsh Labour governments in the devolution era. Free prescriptions and no car parking charges in our hospitals. <laughs> Free breakfasts in our primary schools. Free bus travel for older people and the most generous childcare offer anywhere in the United Kingdom. That's the practical support, that practical support, which has the widest application, but the support that gives the most to those families whose incomes are squeezed the hardest at the end of every week. Now, my immediate predecessor, Carwin Jones, as you all know, took this conference by surprise last year in announcing his intention to stand down after nine years as Labour leader and as First Minister. Since then, there have been many people from within the party and beyond who have marked the many achievements of those important years. So let me offer my own tribute to the man who has made such a huge contribution to devolution and to Wales. Assuming office as he did following the financial crash, his was not an easy inheritance. Yet he led devolution through the successful referendum of 2011. He led his country through what has been nearly a decade of Tory austerity. And he led our party to two vital assembly election victories. Our country our movement and our parliament is stronger today for the fierce commitment I know that Carwin has to public service and to Wales. Gavethion. Gavethion Dioch am Gavraniad Envar Carwin in Gwasanaithai Cahoidis, Ir Blaid Lavir ac i Gymru, for all of those things, for your leadership through extraordinary times, Carwin, and for far, far more, I want to say thank you to you on behalf of everyone here today and in our wider party. Diolch o galon, i ti, Carwin. <laughs> Conference I want to focus next on some of the important and fundamental arguments that Carwin made during his time as First Minister. The dangers of Brexit 
and the dangers of the Conservative Party. A party more dedicated to austerity than to prosperity, a party more content to cut off the United Kingdom than to connect it to the modern world, a party wrapped and trapped by a mythical nostalgia for a past remembered only by its ever-diminishing membership, a party led by a Prime Minister who breaks new constitutional ground every single day, a Prime Minister who has rewritten back me or sack me so that it's now back me or I'll sack myself. <laughs> the first Prime Minister... <laughs> the first Prime Minister in history to fall on her own sword and then to miss. <laughs> Conference. Deep in its DNA, the conference, the Conservative Party, remains fundamentally hostile to devolution. Still unreconciled after 20 years, to us here in Wales making our own choices. They believe in only one source of sovereignty in the United Kingdom. Indeed, for the Secretary of State for Wales, the chaos for, of Brexit is just another opportunity to enlarge his own office. A cover for taking back powers and funding that belong to Wales and repatriate them to Whitehall. So let me issue this very clear warning to the Secretary of State for Wales. If he continues to persist in using the so-called UK Shared Prosperity Fund as a means of bypassing the National Assembly, as a way of using Brexit to shortchange the people of Wales, then he is heading for a fight. We were told, we were told by the Prime Minister that leaving the European Union would strengthen devolution, that an absolute guarantee was built into Brexit, that all the funds that come to Wales today from Europe would continue to flow to us after our membership of the European Union ends. Conference, there are many members here who will have read of the great campaigns of the South Wales miners in the dark days of the 1920s and of their famous slogan, not a penny off the pay, not a minute on the day. So let us put it in simple terms that even this rotten Tory government will understand. When it comes to Brexit, not a penny less, not a power lost. That is the message of this party. That is the message of this conference. And that is the message that this UK government will have to understand. <laughs> now, of course, as a result of the mind-numbing incompetence of the Tory government, it seems as if we will have European elections in a little over one month's time. Now, I have a simple message to everyone in this hall today and to every Labour member and voter throughout Wales. You will be told by the right-wing press in this country that these elections are meaningless, that it's not worth bothering to turn out to campaign and it's not worth bothering even to vote. Please do not believe it. Our opponents, the hardline Brexiteers in the Tory ranks, Nigel Farage's new ego trip of a party, and the last few remnants of UKIP, they will see this as an opportunity to argue not simply that people don't want to leave the European Union, but that people want to leave the European Union without a deal at all. And we will have to show that that is not the case and to do that by making the Labour case. 
because whether we stay or whether we go, we are Europeans here in Wales. And if these elections prove to be only symbolic, then let them be symbolic of our enduring commitment to cooperation and partnership with our friends and colleagues in Europe and beyond. Let us take our example from our great friend and colleague Derek Vaughan, who has fought so hard for Wales over these years, has served Wales so well in the European Parliament. Let us pay the tribute that he and others deserve by taking these elections as seriously as we would, as if it were a general election, and let us fight for every vote, because those votes will matter. Those votes will send a message, and it is the message that this party needs to send. Because conference not only does a Tory Brexit pose a huge threat to the Welsh economy and to Welsh communities, it also poses a very real danger to the future of the United Kingdom. Both Scotland and Northern Ireland voted to remain in the European Union. In both places, there are serious political parties who argue for a future for those countries outside of the United Kingdom. Here in Wales, Labour is a fiercely devolutionist party. We believe passionately that the decisions which affect only people in Wales should be made only by the people of Wales. But we also believe equally passionately that our future is best secured in a successful United Kingdom. Now, under its new leader, at least we know for certain that Plaid Cymru believes in something different. That their first and overriding ambition is for the breakup of the United Kingdom. Now, of course, I have respect for those Pride Cymru colleagues who I have worked with, where we have a shared interest in a Welsh government progressive agenda. But let nobody outside this hall be under any illusion. The consequences of voting Plaid Cymru at the next election is this, that they will use every opportunity they have to break up the United Kingdom and for Wales to be left to go it alone. And if you think that Britain leaving the EU single market has been chaotic, just wait until Wales tries to leave the UK single market. <laughs> Conference, we live in the most testing of times. The utterly botched negotiations with our partners in the European Union have damaged the UK's reputation in the world. And despite the agreement reached last week, the dangers of crashing out of the Union without a deal are very far indeed from being eliminated. The risks to Wales from leaving the European Union have always been greater than elsewhere. And these risks are compounded by the decade of damage that austerity has inflicted on our public services and on the fabric of our communities. Faced with the scale of the challenge posed to our party and to our country, it is not difficult to see why so many of our fellow citizens have become fearful for their future, why they have lost confidence that their needs and their priorities will be safeguarded in what lies ahead. Now, to everyone in this hall, I say, take courage. Have the courage that comes with the lessons of the Labour movement. Have the courage of our own history, that no victory for working people was ever won without a struggle, that the powerful and the privileged will always look after themselves 
first and last. They do not bear the burden of austerity. They will not be damaged by a botched Brexit. It is this party, working here in Wales and working in Westminster, that has put the needs of our economy and of jobs at the top of our Brexit agenda. And that is why I say to people in Wales beyond this hall that they can still look to the future with hope. The hope that comes from knowing that, whatever the difficulties, there is a Labour government here in Wales that is on your side. A Labour government that works every hour of every day to look after Wales and to look out for you. Conference when we have courage and when we have hope and when we act together, then that future can still be one in which we all can have faith. A future in which all can prosper, where the talents that you have and the efforts that you make matter far more than the accident of birth or the money you happen to have in your pocket. A future in which we create that more equal Wales. Gavillion dymar de vodol dwi eisiau adeladu. Cymru yn wlad teg a chyfartal lle mae pawb yn gallu llwyddo. A more equal Wales in which we go on providing those public services which matter to us all but where it is the urgency of your need, not the sharpness of your elbows, which gets you to the front of the queue. <laughs> Conference, the principles of equality, social justice and solidarity have shaped the work of successive Labour governments since the very start of devolution. And in the economy, as you've heard in the debate already this morning, our record is a strong one. We have stood by and will go on standing by our great industries such as steel. Our employment record, as Ken Skates told you, is the highest on record. They have never been more business active here in our economy in Wales. More than 300,000 more people are in work in Wales and our rates of economic activity for the first time ever are now lower in Wales than the UK average. But now is the time, urgently and clearly, to think about the future economy we want to build in Wales a future economy that builds a resilient and fairer future for our communities. It means taking those steps to improve our productivity so that we become one of the most attractive and efficient places to start, to grow, and to invest in a business. But it also means doing something else, developing new industries and new technologies that give us a stake in the future. The announcement last year by the UK government that it would not be taking forward the groundbreaking Swansea Tidal Lagoon project was proof enough of the bankrupt and empty thinking at the other end of the M4. Now that decision was not only disappointing, it was desperately short-sighted as well. Because given our unique natural resources, Wales is in the best possible place to harness the potential of renewable energies to create our future. To use that as a platform on which we can build not only a more resilient and more sustainable energy future, but also one through which we build a more resilient and more sustainable economic future as well. I am determined that we will be at the forefront of renewable technologies here in Wales. We do it because we understand deep in our party that we do not simply inherit this world 
from those who came before us. We borrow it for the brief moment we are lucky enough to be here from those who come after us as well. And we have... We have that immense obligation on our shoulders to hand on this fragile planet and this small place that we occupy, this small and beautiful place that we occupy in it here in Wales, in a state which is fit for those who come after us. And that when we do that, we build a new economic future and a new environmental future that live up to the ambitions that we have set ourselves in that seminal well-being of future generations act. Now, conference, we know that more equal societies grow faster and grow more inclusively. Even the World Bank, even the IMF have woken up to that fact. And they tell us that if you're going to create that fairer society, that partnership with trade unions and businesses, equal partnerships, as you've heard, are key to doing just that. And I'm proud of the social partnership model that was debated here in this hall earlier this morning, that approach that has delivered real protections for workers here in Wales through our Agricultural Wages Act, through our Trade Union Act, through our groundbreaking codes on ethical employment and on procurement, by the work that we've done to abolish zero hours contracts in the care sector, through our Fair Work Commission that will report very soon now, and by the new economic contract that we have laid down. We have progressive and meaningful pro protections for working people here in Wales, and we have created those protections in partnership with businesses, with government, and with the trade union movement. As you know, I gave a commitment in my leadership manifesto to develop a social partnership act, a commitment to legislation that will consolidate that partnership and put the force of law beneath it, a partnership based on equality and on respect with the representatives of government, of businesses, and of the trade union movement, acting together to deliver a fairer and more prosperous Wales, to ensure that companies who take public money demonstrate that in return they are ethical and socially responsible operations. We will begin that process by taking forward implementation of Section 1 of the Equalities Act, that Great Labour Act of 2010. But you've heard in the hall already this morning there is an urgency to get on with all of this, and that's an urgency that I share. And that's why I will begin the new assembly term by setting out the practical actions which we will now take to bring forward that legislation and to put our social partnership approach on the statute to book here in Wales and to do that before the end of this assembly term. Conference, the first 100 days of our new government have been busy. We've met our manifesto pledge to raise the capital threshold for residential care to £50,000 two years earlier than we first hoped we would be able to. We've ended the shame and the unnecessary pain of imprisonment as a sanction for not paying the council tax. We've set up a new fund to support the foundational economy, and we've exempted care leavers from paying council tax at all. All of these changes, all of these changes have their roots in the ideas and the campaigns that you and members of this Labour Party have fought for and developed over the years. And today, I am proud to announce that we are responding to another practical campaign led from within this Labour Party 
the campaign to end period poverty here in Wales. Today, today conference, the Welsh Government will make available more than £2.3 million to provide period products to all learners in schools and colleges who need them here in Wales. Conference, I said that the Cabinet I led would reflect the society in which we live. There are an equal number of men and women in Wales, and for the first time in our history, our government has more men, women in it than men. <laughs> we have a dedicated minister for North Wales. Uh, I said... I said that our government would be driven by the concerns that people up and down Wales have for good quality housing. And that's why we have appointed a Minister for Housing who sits at that Cabinet table. And in housing, we know that fundamental prop of a decent lifestyle. We have to do so much more to reverse the disastrous legacy of those Thatcher years. We have already scrapped the right to buy in Wales. We are already fulfilling our commitment to build 20,000 affordable homes, our most ambitious housing target ever in this Assembly term. We have already used our tax powers to set the highest threshold for stamp duty anywhere in the United Kingdom, helping not just first-time buyers, but all those families in Wales looking to move up the housing ladder. And conference, we will go further. We will set our councils in Wales building council houses again. We will abolish. <laughs> we will abolish unfair letting agents fees in the private rented sector. <laughs> and we will end. We will end the demeaning and degrading practice of no-fault evictions from those people who live in the private rented sector here in Wales. Conference, it is our duty to hear one of the central messages that came out of that difficult 2016 referendum campaign. There is an anger in communities across the United Kingdom about the unending austerity that has torn at the fabric of our communities. People are angry at the way in which the burden of cuts has been loaded onto the shoulders of those least able to bear it. People are angry when they hear the UK government say that austerity is over, when in their own lives they see it going on and on and on. It is the duty of the Labour Party not to deflect or to deny that anger. Ours has always been and always will be a duty to answer that anger with practical and with progressive change, to construct and to build something better and stronger for working people, to protect our public services, to keep our NHS free from the malign influence of the profit-seeking private sector, to keep education... <laughs> to keep education as a right and not a privilege, to build a fair work nation here in Wales. Conference, when I think back to those young people that I mentioned at the start of my speech today, those young people I worked with in Cardiff in the 1980s. Those young people who will now have children and families of their own. We owe it to them to be that beacon of hope that lights the way to their better future. Gavellion roivi am i gymri ddangos y ffordd. Dangos y ffordd at cymdaithas fwy cyfartal. Cymdaithas lle mae cyfiawnder a thecwth yn bodoli i bawb. Dyma'r ffordd Cymreig, 
dyma'r ffordd ymlaen. Never has there been a more urgent need for Labour governments across the whole of the United Kingdom. We have a duty to ensure that our most radical days are those which lie ahead of us. A duty to be ready to work hard every single day to earn and re-earn the support of people in Wales and then to put that trust to work. Ready to renew and to re-describe how we rebuild the Wales of the next 20 years. A Wales in which diversity and equality go hand in hand. In which solidarity and community are the foundation stones of all we do. Where we live out that essential socialist truth that the future of any one of us is bound up in the future of us all. And where together we create that stronger, safer, greener and fairer Wales. The Wales that only this Labour Party can deliver. Thank you. Diolch yn fawr iawn i chi gyd.